Fresh start. 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 Fresh start
what is it about my fear of snakes that prevents me from going to the zoo? What is it about my fear of heights that stops me from going into an elevator? The more and more I think about it, I'm starting to realize that fear isn't the actual bad thing. It's the decisions that we make out of it. The signal was good, but our reaction isn't always good. Because how many poor decisions have we made out of fear? Now, Bible scholars will debate back and forth who they believe wrote the scripture between Moses and between King David. Some say it was Moses, some say it was King David. Now, what's really, really interesting is the time in which they said each author wrote it was a time where they had made a decision that put them on the other side of fear. Now, the other side of fear is when you actually feel the fear and go through with the thing that you wanted to do in the first place. So for King David, they said this scripture was written after he became king. For Moses, they said this was written after the tabernacle was built. Both David and Moses had just completed something that they were afraid of. Saul was trying to kill David. David was on the run from Saul. He became king. He faced it. Moses had been fearful the whole time he and the the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Building this tabernacle was cumbersome. It was tough, but he still did it. Every time that we're faced with something, our greatest achievement will always be on the other side of fear. Man, this is important in our due season because a lot of the things that we want to do that we dream of doing, that we've even planned out of us doing it, we're afraid of. We're afraid of that million dollar business. We're we're afraid of getting out there and chasing our dreams. We're afraid of doing the work required to do so. We're afraid of a lot of these things. And if you can't admit that you are, you're further behind than than you even know. But the fact that we can recognize that when we think about these big dreams that we have, we feel like a twinge of fear, like right here. That's healthy. That is letting you know that where you're headed to is big. It's letting you know that where you're headed to, maybe you need to move with some caution. It's letting you know, boom, this is a signal of where you're heading to. The problem is we use that signal and make poor decisions from it. Now look, I ain't got no answers for y'all, of course. I just got some questions. All I have are, are questions, and I promise these questions that are being asked will help us get to the other side of fear. Let's get started. Question number one, <laughs> why am I so fearful? Why am I so fearful? Think about the decisions that we make every single day, right? Just think about just normal decisions that we have normalized in our lives that we do without thinking. If we are really honest with ourselves, a lot of decisions we make now without thinking were first made out of fear. We just got used to it. We go a certain way to work because the last time we went a different route, we got pulled over by the police. We don't eat pizza for lunch because the last time we did it, it made us sick. We stopped writing the business plan because a part of it confused us and we didn't like the way that made us feel. A lot of our everyday decisions are made out of fear. And you know what's worse than making a bad decision out of fear? is making no decision at all. See, that's the part of fear that freezes us, keeps us in one spot prevents us from moving in the direction that we know we're supposed to go in. We have normalized our fear so much that some of us actually don't believe that we're that fearful. It's normal to us now. So that's letting us know when God tells us not to be fearful, we have to like we have to make a conscious decision to not be fearful because we made so many normalized decisions to be fearful. But why is that? Man, I believe a lot of us are are fearful because we don't take the time to understand our fear 
And a lot of times we don't even take time to feel it. Like, just think about it. The moment that you feel fear, the moment that we feel fear, our natural reaction is to get away from it. If you see a dog and you're afraid of dogs, your natural reaction is to get away from the dog. If you're afraid of heights, like me, and you get up somewhere high, like your instant reaction is to get somewhere lower. When we feel fear, most of the time, our natural reaction is to not feel it anymore. So we avoid dogs. We avoid heights. We avoid the business plan. We avoid the thing that actually makes us feel that way because we don't like how it feels. But just imagine if we took the time to actually feel the whole thing of it, to understand the whole thing of it. When I was little, I was afraid of needles, right? But I was afraid of needles because my brother was afraid of needles. Oh, man, my, my brother would go off if he saw a needle when he was at the hospital because he doesn't like blood. And so when he would have to get a needle, it would take like five or six doctors to hold him down just so they can poke him. And it, it used to scare me. So I'd be like, I don't want no needle either. And then one day uh, I had to get a needle. And I'm at the doctor's office. I'm up here about to start hyperventilating. It's about to start acting like my brother. And then the doctor says, you're going to feel something cold on your shoulder. I said, all right, cool. Then she said, you're done. I said, what? She said, you're done. I had spent so much time being afraid of a needle that I never took time to really find out what a needle felt like. My imagination cooked up something in my brain that made me feel like a needle felt like a bullet wound. That it felt like me getting hit by a two by four. Anything but an actual needle. And so when I actually felt what a needle felt like, it stopped me from being afraid of it. I understood it. I felt all of it. Did it sting? Yes. Did it hurt? Yeah. But not nearly as much as I thought it would. Not nearly as much as I imagined it to be. A lot of us are fearful of things that we haven't even felt yet. A lot of us are fearful of things that we don't understand yet. And the more we don't understand it and the more that we don't feel it, that fear grows and it keeps growing and it keeps growing. And then we keep avoiding it and we keep avoiding it. What if the thing that we keep avoiding is the thing we need the most to get to where we want to go? So let's start understanding this fear thing. Granted, there are about a million things that we could be afraid of. About a thousand, a hundred thousand phobias all, all out here, right? But our basic fears could be all categorized in six categories. So we have, hmm, we have a, a fear of poverty. We have fear of criticism. Fear of ill health. A fear of loss of love. A fear of old age. And the fear of death. All 100,000 million phobias and fears that we have out here in the world could be all categorized in those six categories. In those six categories. Think about it. Our fear of poverty keeps us at that job that we don't want to be at. Our fear of poverty prevents us from starting that business that we don't know if it's going to fail or succeed. Our fear of poverty makes us accept things financially that we know that we're above. When we start thinking about our fear of being poor, our fear of not being able to afford a meal, our fear of not having money, it makes us do really rash things. Like out of all of the, our basic fears, the most powerful one is our fear of poverty. Why do you think people rob? Why do you think people steal? Why do you think people con? Why do you think people commit fraud? Or why do you think uh, people scam? It's a fear of poverty. No one wakes up and chooses, hey, I'm going to take this from this person because I'm feeling great about myself. Our fear of poverty and what we do with that fear shakes us so much 
that most of the times we can't even think straight. Think about how you feel when you have that bill coming up that you don't think you have enough money to pay for. Think about when that special birthday or that special anniversary comes up and you don't have enough money that you would like to have to celebrate adequately. Think about going to the store, putting your card in, and you not having enough to get groceries. Our fear of poverty and what it does to us and how we behave from it and the decisions that we make from it cripples us. We're fearful of poverty because we don't want to be broke. Now, our next basic fear is our fear of criticism. Boy, don't none of us like to be criticized. <laughs> no, nobody like to be criticized. But here's here's the interesting part about it. There will always be some sort of criticism to everything that we do. But our fear of criticism stops us from doing the things that we want to do. Why don't you go after that thing that you want to go after? Because you fear being criticized by someone that you love and respect. You fear being made fun of for doing something different. But then you say that you're not fearful of it and treat it as aggression. I can't count the amount of times I've heard somebody say, I don't care. I don't care what nobody think. You lying. If you didn't care, you wouldn't feel a need to say it. And it's huge on social media. We fear criticism so much that we'll post the things that everyone else is liking, but we won't post the stuff that we actually feel for fear of that criticism. Fear of what them comments going to look like. Fear that ain't nobody going to like your post. Fear that ain't nobody going to look at your post. How many great ideas have you had, have any of us had, that we just sat on because we were afraid what people would say about that idea. Afraid of what people would think about what we're going to do. It's, it's crazy because our fear of criticism causes us to do two things. It either causes us to listen to everyone. Or it causes us to listen to no one. Either way. Whew, that's trouble. Next is our fear of ill health. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to be ill, but our fear of it, it looks quite different. How many fad diets have you been on in the past year? Whether it's uh, keto or whether it's a pescatarian, don't get at me, Patrice. Uh, whatever, whatever kind of diet, how many times have you changed your diet from fear of ill health? How many times do you go to the doctor from fear of ill health? Not from you actually being sick, but from you being fearful of being sick. Don't you know that we create the physical conditions with our mental capacities? Our minds can make anything physical for us. So our fear of ill health gives us just that. Ill health. What fear does, any type of fear, but what fear does to us is it occupies our mind. It occupies the space in our minds where other things should go. And the more it occupies that space, the more power we give it. Thus, giving that energy to that thing that we do not want, manifesting it and making it come true. If we're fearful long enough, the thing that we fear will come to pass. Point blank. So our fear of ill health is critical for our actual health. Have anybody ever heard of the term uh, hypochondria? Now, hypochondria is a condition that people have when they convince themselves that they have a particular ailment, thus creating that ailment, whether it was there to begin with or not. So if I say, man, I got a cold and I'm fearful of having a cold and I physically don't have one at that moment, the more I think about me having that cold, I'm going to produce that cold inside of me. That's how powerful our minds are. That's how powerful our fear is when we allow it to control our decisions. Our next fear is the fear of loss of love. Whew. This, was, this is the big one because out of all of them, this was the most painful. So when we have a, a fear of a loss of love, it does a lot of things to us relationally. 
So when we fear of losing someone that we love, what do we do? We hold on to them tighter. Sometimes too tight. This is how people become controlling. This is how people become uh, distrustful or untrustworthy. This is how we become crazy jealous in our relationships. Any type of relationship, whether it's romantic, whether it's platonic, whether it's uh, family, ophelia, whatever kind of relationship it is, we can ruin it from our fear of loss of love. It is perfectly fine for us to be afraid of losing someone that we love. It is not fine for us to do everything in our power to prevent that, thus already pushing that loved one away. The fear of, of loss of love, it makes us do really, really wild things. For some, it causes us to push people away indefinitely from the mindset of saying, because I don't want to lose you, I'm not even going to let you get close to me. The fear of loss of love makes us extraterritorial over people, thus alienating that person away from everyone else and then us. The fear of loss of love does so much damage to our relationships that by the time we even recognize that we're doing this, everyone's already gone. How many people were you afraid of losing that you ended up losing? Next, we have fear of old age. Why does no one want to get old? <laughs> that is that is crazy. Now, the fear of of old age, I don't even think people recognize the fear of old age makes so many people in this country rich. Like how many people dye the gray in their beards to make it look like they don't have any gray hair? How many people contour their skin with makeup or get plastic surgery to make themselves look and feel younger? So many people are so obsessed with being young that they don't fully appreciate the gift of maturing. And because you fear old age, you don't get to mature. I was having a conversation with a an old friend that I grew up with. And just out of the blue, it's like, James, how old are you? I said, I'm 35. I said, gang, you old. It's like, yeah, stupid. Ain't that the point? <laughs> like, isn't the point of us living life to live it? To continue to get older? But figure something out. A lot of people don't have a problem with getting old. They have a problem with looking old. So we spend all of this money trying to look like the people we're raising. We spend all this money trying to relive all of these times in our past lives that we didn't take advantage of the resources and the opportunities that we had then. So we try to relive them now. Fear of old age. But there is one big reason why we as people have a huge fear of old age. And it speaks to our last basic fear. Fear of death. <laughs> now the enemy loves to use our fear of death against us. Who? Churches love to use your fear of death against you. Because if I can get you to fear death, I can get you to do anything. If I can convince you that you may not live through this, I can convince you to do anything that I want you to do. Including getting saved. Our fear of death comes from us not knowing what comes after this. Our fear of death comes from us not being certain of our relationship with God. Our fear of death comes from us feeling that we haven't done everything that we wanted to do here on earth yet. All of these basic fears, all six of them, whether it's fear of poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, or death, all of these fears can be used against us by the enemy and has been used against us by the enemy numerous times and convinces us to make decisions that go against who we really are. So I want you to stop. I want you to stop real quick, right? I want you to think about which of these six basic fears 
do you feel the most? It could be one, it could be two, it could be a ranking of all of them, and I want you to write it down, and I want you to write why you feel that way about that basic uh, that basic fear. I'm going to give you three minutes. I want us to get used to writing these things out and retaining them when we study. All right, great. Let's get to question number two. I think you know what this is. This is going to be the last, the last question. I thought I had three, but we're just going to do two of them because two of them are going to mix into one. But question number two: How do I how, how do I conquer fear? How do I conquer fear? I think for every one of us, we're always looking for ways to conquer the fears that we feel because initially, like we know that we don't want to feel this way. We don't want to be stuck under this thing of I can only go this far because if I go any further, I'm going to be scared as hell and I'm not going to want to go any further. Like we do not want this glass ceiling life that we live and everything that we hold dear, everything that we want. So on the other side of fear. So how do we conquer it? Well, let's consult the word on it in this scripture in Psalms 91 uh, verse five. It says, God is saying, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Recognize the words that God's saying, right? He's saying, you shall not be afraid. He never says you shall not feel afraid. And I think we mix that up so many times and we kind of push them to mean, to mean one thing when they don't. Feeling fear and being fearful are two completely different things. 
You feeling fear is normal. You feeling fear is a signal that danger is, is close. You feeling fear is normal for us. It's normal for all of us. Us being fearful. It's not. That's not what we're put on this earth to be. We're not put on this earth to be fearful. We're put on this earth to be dominion. To be conquerors. I believe the first step to conquering our fear is being okay with feeling it. It is perfectly fine that your heart start palpitating, start going real, real fast when you come close to that thing that you're fearful of. It's perfectly fine. What is not okay is when we feel that fear, we give into it with the decisions that we make. And then we start making decisions out of what we feel in that fear. That's where it stops being okay. I was uh I was in this uh this work study program when I was uh when I was in school and I worked in the fine arts department of the school. And in the fine arts department is where they do all the plays, where they do the concerts, the orchestra, all of that stuff. So I was in control of making sure all the lights were okay, making sure the stage was set up, making sure the sound was good, like all of those things. And this would be my first time going up into something called the grid. Now, the grid is where all of the lights are, like the lights that shine down on the stage. All the lights are in the grid. The grid is about 40, 50 feet up from the ground. I got to climb about three, four ladders just to get up there. Mind you, I am terrified of heights. Like, terrified. And so, probably my first or second day on the job, my supervisor, Jennifer Jenkins, she says, yeah, I'm going to need you to go up to the grid and change this light. I said, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I'm going to need you to go to the grid and, and change the light. Aaron is going to show you how to do it. Aaron was uh, my supervisor's assistant. And Aaron is going to show me how to put this light up. But for her to show me, I'm going to have to go up there. <clears throat> and so I'm climbing the first ladder. I said, cool, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing but about 10, 12 feet up. I could jump down. Like, I'd be fine. Climb up the second ladder. I said, oh, this is a, it's a little high. Climb up the third ladder. My legs start doing this. <laughs> I get to the grid and I look down. I said, oh, I'm going to die. I am going to die. I'll place my foot on the ladder rung to go back down the ladder. And Jennifer's at the bottom. And she's screaming. She says, it's okay to be afraid. Just make sure you do what you're doing. Um, I didn't understand it then. But she said, it's okay if you're afraid. Just keep doing what you're doing. Jennifer Jenkins acknowledged my fear. Without accepting me running away from what I was doing. She didn't even allow it to be a thought in my head or hers that it was okay for me to stop. Could I have fallen? Yes. Could I have died? Yes. Could I have broken every bone in my body? Yes. But I also could fix the light. I also could walk this grid, feeling the fear but still doing my job. All my life, I had been afraid of heights. But I had yet to feel, completely feel, what that fear feels like while I'm in it. I'm sweating. I'm breathing hard. I'm trying to figure out how can I do my job while I feel like this. The function of my fear let me know that I was in danger of falling. My normal reaction to this fear would be to get as close to the ground as possible. But on today, my reaction was to proceed 
with caution. That's how we conquer fear. I'm afraid of dogs. Proceed with caution. I'm afraid of being embarrassed in front of a whole lot of people. Proceed with caution. I'm afraid of speaking publicly. Proceed with caution. I'm afraid of doing this wrong. Proceed with caution. Our remedy for fear has always been to go the opposite direction. When the actual remedy is to keep going in that direction with caution. I fixed the light on the grid, did some other stuff up there. And as I'm coming down the ladder, after the job is done, I feel this wave, this sensation in my body that I have never felt in my life. This was the first time I had done something in fear, but not out of fear. I was in my moment of feeling fear, but my decisions were not out of fear. In this due season, it is okay that you feel fear. It is okay that you feel it really bad. It is okay. But during this due season, it will not be okay for us to go the opposite direction. In this due season, we will proceed with caution. Father God, you are amazing. You are wonderful. You are brilliant. You are a genius. We love you for loving us. We appreciate all that you do for us. We appreciate everything you are in us and to us. Father God, cripple the fear inside of us that it will not be our decision maker. It will not be our decision maker. It will merely be a signal for what's to come. It will signal us for danger. It will signal, signal us for what's imminent so that we can proceed with caution. Give us wisdom to be cautious. Give us wisdom to be courageous. Give us strength to be courageous. In this due season, God, cripple the fear inside of us so so that we may proceed, even if it's in caution. We love you. We need you in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all know how we do here. We love you. God love you so much more. Go out there and do something dope. Love you guys. What's up, y'all? So glad and thank you uh, for joining us here at Fresh Start Church. Now, with it being our mission to make Jesus famous in your life, we have three calls for you. Uh, The first, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like a relationship with Jesus, 
text that number. We can definitely help you there. Second call, uh, if you do have a relationship with Jesus and he is your Lord and Savior, but you would like a better relationship with him, text that number. We got you. We can definitely help you there. And three, uh, if you do not have a church home, there is nothing fresher than Fresh Start. We will get you into your Fresh Start and we would love, love, love to have you. So join the crew. That is all three calls. If you want to be saved, if you want a better relationship, or if you want a church home, text that number. Also, the given options are in the descriptions. Hey, we love you, but God loves you so much more. Go in peace and may the peace of God be with you.